And Katie joins us now. Good morning to you, Katie. Good morning. Now, uh, you, a lot of what you've been saying about the overweight uh, is probably stuff that they've heard before, that deep inside they know. Why did you go so hard at overweight people? <laughs> <laughs> let's, one, let's get one thing clear to start with, they're fat. So if we could just get over that little bit of politeness there and just accept that we need to call things what they are. So when I lost my weight, I took four people with me on my journey back down and we called ourselves Katie's Fat Club because we recognise the only way to deal with the problem is to be honest about it. And that's what I am, honest. Right. I know that if you're fat, you need to eat less and move more. So the honest, first rule of honest. Fat Club is you talk about Fat Club. <laughs> you certainly you are about honest. Club. What about people who have a medical problem, a slow metabolism? There are other issues at play in their weight gain. You know, give me anybody and they'll give me an excuse. And that was kind of the first premise of this whole show, is to say, guess what? There's no excuses. So you haven't got big bones. It doesn't run in your family. It's not because we had a study over here recently. If your bedroom curtains are too light, too dark, that's why you're fat. No, it's because you eat too much and you don't move enough. So let's get rid of the excuses, park those, let's own the problem, and let's try and do something about it. And my program, my fat story is all about showing that if you shove half the fridge in your face and sit on your ass for too long, you are going to get fat. But we know that some people certainly are predisposed towards being fat. I mean, some people have thyroidal problems or, as, as Eddie mentioned, uh, metabolic problems. It's very difficult, or very much more difficult for some people to lose weight than, than others. So did this experiment give you any compassion for people struggling <laughs> with their size? Darling, darling, I'm all heart. If I'm anything, <laughs> I'm all heart. I'm all heart. But, um, you know, people have said to me all my life, let's turn it on its head, people have said to me all my life, you're so lucky to be skinny, you're so lucky to be thin, you're so lucky. And guess what? I'm not lucky. It turns out that if I shove 6,500 calories in my face every day for three months, and move less than a thousand steps, then I can put on 25 kilos. So I put on another half of me, 50% extra of me, just because I'm not lucky to be skinny. It's just I control what I stick in my face and how much I run. Kenny, what would you have done if you put all the weight on and then couldn't lose it? And then you would have ended up <laughs> fat as well. And your point would have been made, wouldn't have been made. <laughs> I, I know. There was some kind of jeopardy in this thing because whilst it's all worked out and I'm back to my normal kind of 58 kilos, ultimately this could have gone very wrong and the medics did warn at the start of this thing that this may not have been altogether my brightest idea yet. Um, but, you know, I kind of had to believe in what I've always said and I kind of had to trust in the simple maths of this thing that what you shove in, what you put out, that is what controls the size that you are. And it turned out to be that way. On the compassion front, I would say that during this journey, you know, I thought it would be a physical journey, but it actually did turn out to be quite emotional. And the biggest bitch in Britain mm. or whatever I am, the Wicked Witch of the West, I did end up in tears quite often because I found out that being fat is actually quite hard. And I wouldn't wish being fat on any of my worst enemies, and there's quite a few. <laughs> well, that's a nice takeaway, Katie. Very quickly, you've had a go in the past at redheads at kids who have ADHD, that that's a result of bad parenting. Now, the overweight, what's next for you? What's your next target? <laughs> you know, yes, there's lots of things that outrage me on a daily basis. <laughs> um, I think probably fat kids is my next target because one in 10 of our kids goes to school already obese by the age of four. And Australia over there, you don't do much better, actually. You're the second fattest nation on the planet. Mm. So there's still th plenty of things that I'm cross about. And this whole fit image you guys have got, that's a complete myth. I've just spent three weeks in Sydney and I saw some of the fattest people I've ever seen. So you guys make me pretty angry already. Yeah, well, the Krispy Kreme has really taken off big time over here, <laughs> Katie. So, you know, we have to eradicate that scourge first. Listen, thanks for joining us. I mean, it goes without saying that some of history's most beloved characters have been, been quite <laughs> fat. I mean, take your Winston Churchill's uh, hip 70s animation, Fat Albert. I mean, I don't know if that would have been the same if he were Lean Albert. But uh, 
but it's an interesting point you make uh, about the, the you know the benefits of staying fit and not only to the individual but to society as a whole and we uh, we thank you for joining us uh, this thank morning thank you so Thanks. much Katie cheers Katie Phew. <laughs> Let's hope she doesn't take aim at sedentary television presenters who sit on the couch all day next. Well, not that we're, you know, fat as such. <laughs> you forgot to mention Flat Stanley, who was perhaps a That's uh, true. thin figure from literature we should celebrate. Well, I mean, you know, Julius Caesar said, give me men who are fat. Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. Um, you know, Laurie Oates is Australia's most trusted journalist, apparently. You know, sedentary television, you know, what up, you know? I'm staying well. She's, she's not looking at the upsides of here of portliness. That. By the way, do send your complaints to the soapbox. <laughs> not about Andrew, about our friend Katie. Uh, not our words, hers, but very controversial, very interesting. Just making a very tidy living out of uh, yeah. being as. Such. Well, it's a very simple message. You know, as most nutritionists will tell you, if you eat too much, you don't move enough, you become overweight. They just don't do it in those um, stentorian tones. Yes. All right, moving on. Getting married is a day many girls...